All right. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Welcome, welcome, welcome for the ones that are here already. Kind of hard for me to tell how many people we have in the building. First time I've done this, ladies and gentlemen. So please be patient with me. I think we're almost ready for our uh, for the main event. So for those who are catching the replay, as I wait for more people to come in here, today is the day that we start our wine series. Most of the videos we'll be doing, we'll be doing live. Uh, so you can follow along with us real time. But today, today is the 101 version where we're, uh, we're just going to cover what you need. Ms. Kraft is going to talk to you about the process of winemaking. And uh, hi, Jamie, how you doing? Uh, so she'll talk to us about the process of winemaking, things to expect, um, the ins and outs, really. Just a good overall 101. And then as we move forward with the following episodes, after you get your materials that you need, if you're going to follow along with us, then you'll be able to take advantage of that while we do it live as well. So that's the whole intent of this series. I hope you guys enjoy. Miss Craft, don't forget to check out Miss Craft's channel and on, um, I think, version on episode. I know on the finale episode, we'll be doing it at Miss Craft's channel. So you definitely wanna go over there and subscribe because we'll be doing it live the same way. And in the end, Ms. Kraft and I, we came up with a really good idea. I'm going to let her unveil it because it was her idea. And I think it's a really cool idea. So if y'all are ready, I'll check to see if our special guest is ready. And then we can rock and roll. Let me get a thumbs up if you're ready to go. If you're ready to learn how to make some wine. Oh, yeah. Guap. Get your wine ready. Jamie Simpson. How you doing today, Jamie? Hmm. There is a 20 second delay, by the way, going through Zoom. So keep that in mind. For the first 10 to 15 minutes, we will open it up to Q&A. Then Ms. Kraft will go into her presentation and then we will transition back for Q&A as well. That's great, that's great, you're doing great. Good to hear, Jamie. You gonna make some wine with us, Jamie? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and bring Miss Kraft in. I think she's ready. And uh, just keep in mind, we got a, about a 20 second delay. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and bring the main event in. The lovely, lovely Miss Kraft. Hola, hey baby. <laughs> Y'all ready? Let's make some wine. Let's make some wine. Without further ado, I bring to you the wonderful, delightful Miss Craft. There she is, y'all. Look at her, looking all fancy. <laughs> How are you doing this evening. Hope everybody's doing well. You're in the apartment. 
and dweller jamie uh, jamie's in the house she says she doesn't think she's gonna make wine with us because she's an apartment dweller well i think this is the perfect thing for an apartment dweller what you think absolutely thinking? yeah don't don't yeah you are not limited to space on this at all <laughs> so yes you can definitely do this i actually i actually Right. I actually have most of the um, supplies with me here today. So okay. we'll be, uh, as you go through the different steps and when we're talking about different That's inventory, husband. we got a C, 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 who is it? C7, C, C7, 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 C7. C7, <laughs> say hello. Welcome. Hi to the people. What's going on, hubby? How are you doing, brother? Uh, you Hi, doing? Marcus. Good to, good to see you, good to see you. Okay, so, oh, okay, we're guavoing early, all right. Oh yeah, there's wow. no way that we can do wine. Hey, cheers. <laughs> no <laughs> way we can do wine without a little bit of wine. Absolutely. Hey, you made a live chat. That's what's up, DIY dad, DIY dad, you can DIY you some wine with us. There you go. Um, be if, I, if I'm looking series. off to the side, it's because I'm trying to keep tabs on the uh, chat and my notes at the same time. So, <laughs> Fr Humphrey, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. Hey, hey. Yep. There we go. Okay. So, what we'll do, since we got a few people in here right now, if you have any questions, we'll let you go ahead and fire out your questions now. For the next ten, let's say the next ten minutes, I'll I'll put a timer on us. It's uh, 4 7 right now. So at 420, we will start the presentation. So if you have any questions, this is a good time to kick out your questions right now. Why right. Laugh, how I did. <laughs> yeah, so if you, you're just curious or if you think that you can't do it because you have limited space or something like that, go ahead and fire those things out right now so we can go ahead and put up red, put that to bed, put that to rest. Yes, yes, yes. Put that to rest. Yeah, and then after that, we'll roll into the presentation. She's, uh, we're, we're gonna, after this video is over, all of the supplies we're going over in the live chat will be in the description from below. Okay, Liz in the house. Liz. Miss <laughs> Craft, Miss Craft, um, she came up with a really good idea yesterday while we were talking. I'm gonna let her tell you about it though. Cause I think it's a really good idea, but it was her. <laughs> so I'm gonna let her we gonna slide let that in. Out the cat. We gonna let that out the bag today? Okay. No, no, <laughs> I mean, hey, it's up to you if uh, you wanna let out the bag today, but I just wanted to give him the heads up that you came up with a great idea and you'll be reaching out to him here soon. But if you wanna let it out today or wait until later, have you ever made wine did not that did not register on a hydrometer, but still came out good? That's for you, Miss Craft. We got C7C7 is asking, have you ever made wine that did not register on a hydro hydrometer, but still came out good? No wine would not ever register on a hydrometer, okay? Um, even if it's down to absolutely no sugar in it at all, it's still going to register. Um, can you make wine without a hydrometer, if that's the real question? Yes, you can. How good it's going to taste? Um, to know the alcohol volume on it, you need a hydrometer to do that with. But as far as being able to make a wine without it, you can absolutely do that. Lynn, I don't know what you done did to YouTube, but you always come up flagged. Um, so I just made you a moderator <laughs> without asking you, I'm sorry. You don't have to put the work in, just sit back and enjoy, but I'm tired of clicking to, to approve your post. I don't know what you done did to make YouTube mad. But yeah, sorry. I had to say that real quick before he typed again and saw a blue wrench and I'm like, oh, you just made me a moderator without talking to me. I'm sorry, but I don't feel like keep approving your stuff. And yeah. I think I think Laquita is enjoying just watching. Uh, hey, does that Super Saiyan, your I see you, lady. <laughs> does that answer your question, C7, C7? We got uh, an easy no and a hard no from Lad, and then an easy no <laughs> from, from uh Can it be Brown. done? Yes. Should it be done? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you did, bro. You done mess. You done. You done made YouTube mad or something. I don't know. <laughs> you used a hydrometer. Good deal. So you, so you used a hydrometer, but it didn't read on the hydrometer. I'm gonna guess that maybe something was wrong with your hydrometer if it came out decent. 
No, um, I would have to actually know what your readings were. I would have to know what your original reading was. I'd have to know what you finished as, um, what yeast you used, what base juice you used. Um, a, a lot of factors can go into it. I just need to know um, what you did. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Any other questions? Any other questions? We got about nine minutes left for questions, and then we'll roll into the presentation. Yep, any other questions? Right now we're doing, I'm not sure what's going on, but my channel has been tripping like crazy, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm gonna hope, well, let me knock on wood before I say it out loud, some real wood. Let's hope what happened to me yesterday does not happen to me today. Yeah, what oh, the um, buffering and all of that? Yeah, the buffering and it just cutting out on me, it was crazy, like I looked up and it was just gone. Yeah, uh, I wonder if it's um, if it's um, bandwidth. I mean, it's Saturday, and it was just like post after post after post. Everybody yeah, was yeah. put their yeah, stuff out possible. there on Saturday. So maybe how many, we just open them. How many square feet of space do you need per case of wine yield? That's a question from DIY Dad. OK, a case of wine is 12 bottles, right? Uh, yes. 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 So there you go. <laughs> how many square feet? Eight hey, box. <laughs> I've never measured a box of wine, maybe, but maybe the 12 question bottles. Was, yeah, I think. Uh, are we understanding your question right, DIY Dad? I hope so. Hope we're not jacking it up. So we got a uh, high from North Carolina, Zone 8, Semper Fi. Semper Fi, Lady Smith. Hey, okay. Semper Fi. Thank you for your service. <laughs> For your service, that's right. Hey, from New Jersey, Guava. Guava hey, Jersey. Too. I'm an old Jersey girl. Guava. Yep. Guava. Correct. I bought a second hydrometer and made it a second time with the same thing, white grape cherry, but my apple pie was on 0.11%. Okay. Nice. That's about nice. where you want to be with you want. Nice. Okay, so yeah, we did now, answer. If it's a situation where that. your hydrometer was broken, it was probably a very hairline crack in it. Okay. Which is why I tend to lead towards plastic ones over the glass ones. The reading's okay. a little bit better with glass, but it's, it's, it's you know, sensitive because <laughs> it's a very thin piece of glass. Yay. <laughs> got my props. Yeah, it's probably, props. It, it was probably a very hairline crack in it that was causing it not to. In other in other words, is it pointless with limited space? No, because it's wine. No, no. Wine is never pointless. <laughs> Not at all. It depends can... on how, yeah, it just, thank you. <laughs> I just caught what you said. Wine <laughs> is never pointless. We will wine make room never... for wine. <laughs> yeah, we will make room for wine. <laughs> <laughs> but all you really need is enough for your uh, fermenting vessel, which is usually a uh, bucket of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, some room for your uh, your tools that you're going to use to mix with, and we'll go into more detail as I go into my little speech. <laughs> um, <laughs> that can sit in your sink. Um, you really, it, it's cooking. If you have room to cook, you can make wine. <laughs> it's that simple, people. Yeah. That simple. If you have room to, if you have room to store your um, canned goods, you can make wine. If you have a closet. You can make wine. <laughs> there you go. And if you don't have room to store all six or 12 bottles, just drink half of them before you store it. I like the way this man thinks. Problem solved. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> I'm out here taking care of the lawn and turf. Turf is talking about wine. What is the world coming to? <laughs> I literally just got done. Outside, you know, I'm doing my lawn renovation series too. I'm running all these things at the same time. Thank God I took leave and it was approved because there's yes. no way to do this <laughs> would still be in that work, which is part of the reason why I took the leave so I can make time to do this. So, good yeah. deal. Don't worry, one day I'll come and help you get that lawn right, Led. <laughs> I thought it was the flavor I chose. What's funny, my wife says it tastes good. She preferred it over the white grape cherry over the apple pie. Okay, C7, C7. C7, do you fly airplanes? 
Is that why you got the C7 C7? I'm just asking, curious. Uh, Giggy 2.5, hello, welcome. Hello. Coming in. Welcome to the party. Yeah. So while, uh, until we get another question pop up, we got what, four minutes. Miss Craft, tell the people about you, how it came to be, how Miss Craft's small, small, uh, small space gardening. Talking to us now. <laughs> Small space gardening and more. Did I say that right? Or just yes, you did. Perfect. Okay. Small space gardening and more came to be as how we know it today. And then, uh, what are your sources for equipment? We're going to answer that, Humphrey. So there's no need for us to hit that twice. Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, I've actually been on YouTube for a while, but mostly just kind of playing around with different things. I used to uh, make little music videos for soap operas. That's actually how I started. <laughs> back in the day. It was actually okay. kind of fun to do that and le learn how to edit. Um, it has since grown since being a part of the um, gardening community um, and the greenhouse lounge, shout out the lid, <laughs> <laughs> that I started putting some more, con more focused content out there. And what I tend to specialize in is not only my garden space outside, but container type gardening. Um, because of the uh, regulations that I have to deal with with the homeowners association. So I don't have a lot of land. I got, this is the crazy thing. I got land, but I can't do anything with my land because of the homeowners association. So I do a lot of stuff in containers. So I focus on container gardening and I also focus on interior or indoor gardening using hydroponics, um, specifically cracky method of hydroponics. Um, I won't go into all of that because um, let me let me say right. something about myself right now. I'm a, also known as the geeky farmer because I can get deep into the weeds with things because I love all that geeky, takey, how do things work type of person. Um, so I have to right. be mindful not to go there <laughs> because not everybody's interested and I have to keep everything <laughs> high level. So and I'm going to try my loving best in this conversation to keep everything high level so no one gets like glazed eyes and like, what the hell is she talking about? So <laughs> <laughs> facts, facts. I will nerd out along with you. So maybe we'll make it, uh, we're going to task Super Saiyan and Leia Farmer with keeping us on task when we ramble. Those are probably two of the worst peoples to keep us on track too, because Leia has you know a <laughs> And my I wife does. Say, too. I, don't think about, I don't think those. I didn't take that back. <laughs> Hello, everyone. No, it's all good. It's all it's good. I have my going. notes. And I'm gonna stick to my notes. <laughs> I will stick to my notes, I promise. So okay. we're gonna call this whole thing freshman level wine making 101. Boom. Okay. We I are like not it. gonna go deep into the art of making wine at all. We're just gonna you at the end of this project is gonna get nice table wine that you can enjoy. That's right. That's the whole intent of it all. That's the whole One thing goal. that Miss Miss Craft didn't tell you. Uh, with her crafty side, she likes to do a lot of things. If you see behind her those paintings, what's going on, Ayan? She painted those paintings. I recently discovered. So her and I have been doing test practice runs behind the scenes with Zoom, and I recently <laughs> discovered that she likes to paint. And I do those like paintings to paint. behind her. She <laughs> paints. So you know, maybe in the future we'll do something with that as well. Hint, yeah. hint. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on, Ayan? How you doing, brother? Yeah. Okay, so we're about at time, one minute away. We are going to start, uh, what's that? Cheers from Germany. Uh, oh my God, oh, really? Hi, Germany. Guten Tag. Christoph. Hi, Christoph. Rademacher. Where are you at? Are you in uh, Bulgaria or Highland Falls? What, which part of uh, Germany are you in, my friend? Mm -hmm. I speak in Sie Deutsch. You say one of... One of the things that's on my bucket list is to do Oktoberfest in Germany. It's on my list. I really want to go there and do that. So when you go, arguably, people will say that Munich is hands down the best one. But uh, while I was there, um, I want to say, um, gosh, Stuttgart. I think Stuttgart, well, I call it Stuttgart. Let's start Lady Lead Paints too Crafty. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we're say, definitely doing what uh, we talked about. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's actually going to be perfect, right? Yeah, yep. but um, yeah, I think Stuttgart does one too. There's the main one in Munich or Munchen, and then I think Stuttgart does another one or some other major city does another one. Apparently that one is better because the other one has gotten uh, 
I don't know. It's commercial don't know too, too much. Amazing. Uh, it's commercialized, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what yeah, I nah, I want to go with I'm the real sure. Chris Law. <laughs> right. <laughs> Christoph can attest to that, I'm sure, since he's yes, in yes. Germany right now. And if you're in Germany right now, oh my goodness, it's like what? To 12 o'clock at night? Man, I appreciate you. Thank oh, you. wow. Yeah, we love you for that. Thank you for Right. I around. appreciate you. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. Awesome. Okay. So let's let's, okay, so let's we don't want to keep those, we don't want to keep Christoph up too late. So All right, well, let's not keep uh, Christoph up too late. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and get started. I got my props ready, and okay. from here I will just watch the chat, making sure nothing pressing pops up. But please hold your questions for the next thirty minutes, so she can walk us through this process, and then when we get done, we will open it back up for a Q and A. Okay, yes. how's that sound, guys? All right, so let's okay. give the floor to the lovely Miss Craft. Hey. Okay, so uh, what we're really going to discuss today are the things you're going to need to follow along with us to make wine. And we're actually going to talk about the process of making wine at a very, very high level um, and how it kind of differs from a different type of fermentation um, processes like between beer and pickles and all of that. We're going to talk just real high level on how that changes. Okay. Now, the whole project, what I'm... Um, my goal is to help you learn is uh, how to measure your alcohol content, um, alcohol by volume, the kind of the conversation that um, C7 and I were having, how to measure your uh, alcohol content. We're also gonna talk about characteristics of different wine yeasts <clears throat> and what they do and how they work. Um, we're going to touch a little bit into towards the end why wine making is considered an art form. And as you go along, you're going to discover why that's the case um, and how you can actually make this one project into a huge new hobby for yourself. Um, and then the last but not least, the thing that you're going to learn from doing this project is patience. <laughs> you will learn patience, just like when you're in the garden and you're waiting on that seed, you're gonna to have to wait on your wine. Your wine will tell you when it's ready. Um, there was a commercial a long time ago, we will serve no wine before it's time. <laughs> that is gonna be your mantra the entire process, okay? So um, again, to mention the ultimate goal is to make a nice table dessert type wine for you that's gonna range around 12% or so. Uh, that's going to be easy drinking, something that you can impress your family and friends with. And we're all gonna do it hopefully by the, um, but before, before Halloween. <laughs> if all the stars align and everything works out great and the temperatures are wonderful and the readings hit just where we want them, when we want them, you should definitely have wine between the four, um, 30, no, I'm gonna have to, let's, let's stretch it out again because we're going into fall, uh, 45 day mark or so. Okay. All right. That's a good little opening. Um, I like it. I'm excited. So let's go ahead and start with, um, <laughs> Christoph says, I'm a little bit drunk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's FR Humphrey. This is going to be a series. So where do you want to start, Ms. Craft? Okay. Um, let's start with what you're going to need first, and then I'll go in more into depth of the actual tools that you're going to need. Okay. Um, so for this pro project, we're going to need a gallon of 100% juice, whatever flavor you want. The uh, juice itself, though, needs to be um, uh, well, I almost got, potassium sorbate, sorry, <laughs> potassium sorbate or sulfide free. Both of those are, are pre preservatives and will hinder your yeast from working. So we need just plain old unpreserved juice. Acetic, excuse me, asorbic acid and citric acid are fine to be in those. Those are naturally occurring um, acids within your juice. But the other two, sorbic acid, excuse me, potassium sorbate <laughs> or sulfide are no-nos. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the reason why we're using juice over fruit is because what I said at the beginning, this is freshman 101. <laughs> we are going to learn how to walk before we learn how to run. 
and then from running we will fly okay but we got to learn how to walk first so we're eliminating a lot of steps that have to take place with using fresh fruit um, by using an already processed juice uh, another alternative you can use instead of getting the juice that's in the jar you could also get um, fruit concentrate juice concentrate and reconstitute it with water those work fine as well so whatever flavor you want juice is what we're going to use okay you are also going to need about two pounds of sugar for this recipe um you're going to need a packet of yeast and i'll go into what type of yeast in a minute you're going to need um primary and secondary ferment vessels and again i'll go into detail in just a minute um you'll need a siphon you need some type of wine thief a hydrometer and an airlock okay and i will step through all of these by importance um <clears throat> There are basically uh, four steps to making wine. It's four. The first one is your fermentation. The second is your clarification. The third is your finishing. And your fourth, enjoying. <laughs> Do we skip the step four? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to have to work for number four okay that's right and, and we're all gonna do it together is working for it okay. hi clausen how you doing okay hey clausen world hey <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i'm going to go ahead and jump into the tools i'm going to share my screen if my mouth works okay. oh yeah share the screen and i'm going to switch it to speaker view and i'm going to mute myself guys that way it doesn't bounce back to me okay so <clears throat> The very first thing that I will say that you absolutely 100% have to have is a hydrometer. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Um, you use your hydrometer to take what is called a specific reading. And what that equates to is how dense your liquid is that's in your testing vessel. Water is not dense at all. There's nothing in it. Sugar added to water makes the water thicker. I mean, everybody knows that. Usually, you know, the longer you leave sugar in, or the more sugar you add, it becomes like syrup, so it becomes thicker. Well, what this tool does is basically measure how much sugar you actually have in your water or your liquid in this case. In our, in our case, it's gonna be juice. <clears throat> um, as we go through the process, you're going to introduce yeast into your um, in, into your juice and that yeast is going to ferment and it's going to kick off some some gases and things like that and it's going to kick off alcohol during the process in order to do that it's eating for lack of better work in terms to really make it make sense it's going to eat that sugar away towards the end of that process we're going to measure it again <clears throat> And the difference between when you started with the sugar and how much sugar you have left that the, um, from what the yeast ate is where it's called your alcohol by volume or how much alcohol or your proof of alcohol is. I hope that makes sense. Like I said, as we go along, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go into more depth uh, through the process. Um, as a matter of fact, what I will do is um, make a separate video just on hydrometer reading. So everybody will be prepped on how to do this, okay? Um, I feel myself going into the weeds, so I'm gonna come right back. <laughs> <laughs> come on, bring it on back. Yes. Bring it on back. But yes, this is something you are going to have to have in order to create a decently tasting wine, okay? Um, the second tool that you will need, <clears throat> but don't necessarily have to buy, um, can you see my screen okay, Robert? Yep, yeah, we can still see your screen. Okay. Would be a two gallon plastic fermenter with a drilled lid. Now, um, anybody that is handy can make a, can take a food grade bucket, put a grommet in the top, and you have the exact same thing, <laughs> okay? Saving you some money. Um, 
I'm lazy, so I just bought one. <laughs> and you get two of these, so they're not badly priced at fifteen dollars. Got it on. I got mine right here, guys. And um, like she said, if you're handy, you can knock it out yourself. I know someone in the chat has done that before, and maybe, just maybe, he might slap together a little quick how-to video for those people that are in, interested in doing it on their own, getting a food grade bucket from Ace. And yes, I'm talking to you, Led, so. Hit, 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 hit. <laughs> <laughs> a little quick video on how to make your own fermenter from yes. scratch, because that man's all about that. Yes. Now, there are people in the, in the winemaking community that do everything in one vessel. And you can do that. Um, but I think for this first go around, I want you to separate each piece out so you can one, see what's happening and two, understand what's happening. Um, I'm from the camp of understand the why, then you can tweak, um, tweak the how, okay? So through this process, we're going to go through the whys and I prefer that you keep everything separate, okay? Um, that leads me up to these vessels right here. This would be your secondary um, fermenter <clears throat> that I like. Um, what Robert's holding up is a carboy, okay, and with the narrow neck there. Um, these yep. here that I'm showing are one gallon wide mounts. Anybody that ferments pickles or um, uh, peppers or okra, anything like that, they probably have these fermenting type bottles already or jars already. Um, the reason why I like these for secondary uh, fermentation is one, I can see what's going on um, once I take the initial wine off. And second, it's wide enough for me to do with it, ever stirring or things like that that I need to do versus the narrow neck of something like this. But that I'm gonna leave up to you. It's up to you which one you which you, you prefer to use. Stick with the wide mouth, guys. I just I just held up the wrong thing. That's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now how you gonna be my prop man? I know, <laughs> right? I just realized I don't have that prop with me. I don't uh, yeah. All I right. guess all my stuff isn't here yet. So <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So that's what you need next. Um the third thing that you need to have, and I'm showing two types here, are your airlocks. Okay, now what an airlock will do is one, keep stuff out of your brew as it's brewing. So gnats and lint and dirt, all of that would stay out. In fact, let me see. So I'm trying to like eyeball while I'm watching the screen here. Uh, there we go. All right. <laughs> um, they would keep your dirt and, and things like that. And it also will let you know if your yeast is still kicking off carbon dioxide. Uh, so let me backtrack just, just a hair. I'm gonna go into the weeds, just a hair. When you make wine, you are introducing yeast to sugar, okay? Your sugar feeds your yeast. Your yeast, as a result, is going to belch off carbon dioxide and poop out al alcohol. <laughs> um, that belching of carbon dioxide does two things. It helps uh, protect your wine. It helps keep it uh, uh, preserved. And um, it gives it bubbles as well. Um, depending on how you want to finish your wine, you don't want the carbon dioxide at the end, but during the process, you want that carbon dioxide in your wine. Okay, what this will do is let you know, yes, my yeast is making carbon dioxide. Woo, it's cooking. <laughs> okay, so that's what this is for. They have, see, I think I kind of, I can try to look at the other screen at the same time, make sure it's scrolling up. There we go. You got two types. You have what's called a twin bubbler, which looks like a, a, a pipeline. And then you have a fast rack. Um, again, people who tend to ferment pickles and things like that, they're probably more used to this airlock here, the fast rack, and people who do wine use that, the pipe. There really is no difference. It really is a preference. 
I prefer the uh, twin bubbler there. I can read it easier. I just like it. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing deep about it. That's yeah. all. I to, yeah, okay. and Lance, like Lance just said, uh, you can also make your own airlock. Yes, I was but about to go mind, there. I'm sorry, yep. then. I was going to say, but keep in mind, we're beginners, and sometimes it's easier <laughs> for the beginners to just get the tool that's made that you can use more than once. Yes. But I have a strong feeling that Lance is going to show us how to do this DIY stuff. Yes. <laughs> I can strong feel. Blit, I don't know why. Blit, but. Blit, blit, blit. <laughs> uh, but yes, according to my friend there, you absolutely can make your own airlock by using a water bottle and airline hose from the um, aquarium store or aquarium station. Um, instead of sticking this into the grommet on top of the bucket, you would stick one end of the airline into the bucket grommet, the other end into the top of the closed water bottle, and that will let you know if the CO2 is, is bubbling out. Okay? Oh. Boom. There you go. So that's, a, that's a cheap alternative as well. But again, three, uh, three bubblers for less than six bucks. Right tip for that. I mean, you never know. Like I said, if we want to try to, to, to make sure everybody can do this. So yeah, so that's, a, that's another alternative to the airlock. Um, let's see. Oh, my favorite thing. <clears throat> when it's time to um, get ready to move your wine from one um, vessel to another or even into the bottles, you're gonna need a siphon, okay? Um, the reason why you need a siphon versus just a cup to, you don't want to introduce oxygen into your wine and there's a reason why. There is a bacteria that's all around us and I wrote it down, it's called Acetobacteria. Okay, Acetobacteria. That is the bacteria that makes vinegar. <laughs> that, bacteria multiplies by oxygen and alcohol. Your yeast makes carbon dioxide and alcohol. <laughs> oxygen is heavier than carbon dioxide. <laughs> so if that bacteria finds its way into your wine, you will get vinegar. You will not get wine. Okay, so we need to take all precautions to keep that bacteria at bay, which is why you really want to use things like siphons and anything that is going to keep the least amount of oxygen in your brew. Okay, now I'm going to come back from my geek back to here. <laughs> Coming on back. <laughs> we're really back in. Yeah, that was an excellent explanation because sometimes when you don't tell people why you're trying to do something, they skip it or they think it's not important. Exactly. That's you need to understand up the why. You end up with vinegar. Right. Right. You end up with vinegar after 45 days rather than some sweet guava. You know, exactly. So, exactly. You know, Understand the why before you tweak the how. <laughs> okay. So for me, yes, DIY dad. I like the auto siphon here. It's the mini siphon. All you have to do is stick this long piece right here into your uh, fermentation vessel. Give it one or two quick pumps and it will siphon off your uh, wine into your next uh, vessel. Very easy. Still waiting on uh, mine to come in. <laughs> if you don't want to go that route, you can go the old fashioned way, the same way that you used to siphon off gas from say, your best friend's car. Get a piece of tubing <laughs> long enough that you can stick it into your brew and siphon it off into your next car boy, okay? Um, this one down here, I also added this one to the list. This one also includes a bottler, which we'll go into much later, but something just to consider to make things easier. Um, the way I like to look at things, you can use either the power tool method, which makes things a lot easier, or the butter knife method. <laughs> It'll get it done, <laughs> but it won't be so easy. So I, I'm, I'm more on camp, you know, power tool. 
power tool is. And, I'm, I'm about the power tool life as well. Yeah, so, and that's really <laughs> what this is right here. It's a whole complete kit that'll give you everything you need to be able to siphon off your wine as we go along. Awesome. Now, I know you guys noticed this right here, the turkey baster. <clears throat> um, this is where I, I'm, I'm gonna say butter knife-ish type of tool. Um, in the winemaking craft, there is something called a wine thief. And what that is, is a tool. Matter of fact, let me see if I can scroll down and show it to you. It's really easy. This right here, where you just kind of stick the tube down into the wine. You got one. Got you, one. Stick, yeah, you stick it down I into the wine. <laughs> it's going to take a sample, right? You take it out of the container, stick it either in a glass or your beaker for testing and it will release the wine there without disturbing too much of your wine or introducing yeast. I'm sorry, the, the, the delay is happening on the, uh, on the, on the video, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a 20 second lag, but. <laughs> yeah, the um, turkey baster. That's what Leia uses, called yep. turkey thief. The turkey baster, <laughs> well, we, it's a cheap alternative to the thief, okay? it will give you the opportunity to go in, take your samples without disturbing your wine or introducing more than more oxygen than necessary. Okay. Everybody that cooks should <laughs> have a turkey baster at home. Sure. Um, you can either really uh, uh, sterilize it really, really well, and we'll get into sterilization in just a minute, or buy you a new one specifically for making wine so you can keep it clean. Okay. So that's another tool that you're going to need. Uh, now we're going to get into, well, um, those are really all the tools. Oh, one more, one more thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thing. Yeah, no, we got two more things. You need, you need um, a stirring spoon. Yep. Um, I prefer slotted spoons because it helps with, um, with degassing a little bit. Um, but you can use any spoon you got, whatever one, and you're going to need some measuring cups and measuring spoons. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, uh, that'll help with measuring and mixing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing deeper than that, unfortunately. I can't, I can't geek out on a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's a spoon. <laughs> Sorry. No more. All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, Oh, I, this is the other thing here. I'm sorry. Um, let me see if I can slide it back down a little bit more. Um, I said I was gonna go into sanitation. This kind of gets back to what I was talking about with making vinegar, when we're trying to avoid making vinegar. Everything you use to make your brew must be sanitized. Again, the um, actor brand, <laughs> Acetobacter <laughs> bacteria is All everywhere. Right. Just like yeast it's is everywhere. everywhere. That is everywhere. So you need to be able to uh, disinfect and sterilize all of your tools. Right. All right. What What's nice, restaurants? Nice and, yes. What restaurants and and winemakers and brewmakers may use? They use something called Standstar. It is a um, it's it, it's a very mild acid that kills all this stuff off. Um, a little bottle, Robert, can you show your bottle again for us, please? Okay, here's the bottle. Yeah, right that here. bottle will last you a very, very long time. Very okay. long time. Now, if you don't want to make that purchase, you can use hot water and bleach, just a little bit of bleach. Okay. Don't wanna to use too much bleach because that'll be bleach in your wine but just enough to kill off everything. Just pretty much like you would anything else that needs to be sterilized, okay? Just a little bit of hot water and bleach would be an excellent alternative to the sanitizer. Use a paint mixer in my drill to paint So is there, are there any, are there any questions on the tools? Tools, that's it guys. Those are all the tools that we laid out. And like I said, when we get done with this, we have built a nice little shopping cart that you will be able to go to. It'll be in the description of this video. You can go through and get the items that you need based off this presentation. 
So any questions on the tools? Let's say he uses a paint mixer in his drill to degas the brew. That's yes, yes. When we get to that point where we're ready to degas, um, and basically all that is doing, remember I told you that yeast uh, has two primary um, byproducts. Uh, alcohol and carbon dioxide. When you're making a wine, you want the least amount of carbon dioxide left in your bottled wine as possible. So what we do is call a process called degassing. All that's doing is getting rid of the uh, carbon dioxide out of the brew, <clears throat> excuse me, without adding oxygen into the brew that would cause it to turn into vinegar. Um, I thought I had a, come on, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. When using bleach, is it, is it important to use plain regular bleach? Is it, is it, are you asking or saying? I think he was saying it like, oh. when you're using bleach, make sure you use just the straight up bleach, not that foo-foo stuff. Yes, yes, you don't want any added, just plain ordinary bleach. Okay. Because remember that you're introducing, to the, introducing this to a food product. Right. Right, right. Okay. So you just want that straight, that straight, that straight uh, bleach, that straight chlorine yes. to burn yes. your eyes. That's yes, what you yes, want. yes, yes, yes. You want to burn um, your eyes. Yeah, the screen, screen is grow, going down right now, and it's called a whip wine degasser. Basically, you use something like this on your drill, and it'll whip it really, 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 really fast, and it will get rid of the carbon dioxide out of it. Nice. You can also do the same thing with a slot a spoon. Um, if you give me just half a, what is it? What is it like? Give me, give a me teat. two ticks. Give, give me two, two ticks. ticks, two ticks, <laughs> two teats. Give her two ticks, two teats, people, while she's going out entertaining you. You said, I'm scared. Sounds like chemistry lab. It is not chemistry lab, Humphrey. And that's why when we mix up our wine in the next episode, hopefully if I get my supplies in, all my supplies in by Sunday, we're going to do that live as well. And it doesn't take long. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes. You're literally just putting the juice in the sugar, the yeast, closing everything up, and then boom. boom. Although in between, Miss Craft, I'm gonna kind of let the cat out of the bag, but Miss Craft will be putting together a sanitizing video for you in between now and then. So make sure you subscribe to her channel. Hydrotonic reading. <laughs> Hydro <laughs> meter reading. <laughs> Hydro meter reading. She's gonna teach you some basic stuff that we just need to get out of the way before we get yes. to the wine making portion. So that'll be coming out sometime next week. I will share it in my community post when she actually does it. And of course, if you subscribe to her channel and hit the notification bell, guess what? You're not gonna miss it. There you uh, go. He's back. Um, here's what I wanted to show you. Matter of fact, I start screen share my screen because we're kind of we're pretty much done with that. So we're see. done with that. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, this is called a whipper. Anybody have ever seen this? Anybody likes making frothy drinks and stuff like that? It will whip the heck out of your um, your wine, Milk. and that also take your gases out. This is more for after you've opened your wine. You want if you've ever heard the term of aerating your wine. This is what this will do for it. Matter of fact, if you if you really want to see something cool, this is a wine. <clears throat> matter of fact, this is a wine I made last. What's left of it? That's December. <laughs> mm -hmm. No judge. <laughs> this is the I'm wine gonna... I made last night. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no. I like that clear wine, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. hey, so I'm going to show you. Um, there is still, once it's done, there's still carbon dioxide in there. So I'm going to show you. You're going to whip this up really, really well. Uh, That's still carbon dioxide trapped into the wine. Look at that. That was dope. CG, right. my Aries friend. You know, my wife, y'all, y'all, y'all thriving together on that Aries Nation. <laughs> Virgo season now. There you go. Mm. Right. Virgo stand up. Matter of fact, I, if, even when you buy wine from the store, get you one of those. It will make your wine from the store taste totally different. Yeah, so it's just like the aerators, right? That you run your pat you pass your wine through before you pour it. Yes. It's that makes the sense. exact same thing. It makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a couple of reasons why you do want to aerate your wine, depending on what your final product is. Um, you definitely want to degas your wine to keep your bottles from exploding. <laughs> we don't want wine that. bottles. And, yeah, and I should have gone into this too when I was talking about things <laughs> that you need. 
Wine bottle, what do you say? <laughs> she okay. said, my jug, my jug wouldn't last that long. <laughs> there you go. That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. But um, who's to say that was the first jug, man? Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. But um, and the plot thickens. Uh, yeah, so there, there are certain type of wines that do certain type of things. The wine we're making will be will be considered a still wine. I, I did, I did remember something. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go back and share my screen again. Well, okay. actually, let me go into the speech and then I'll tell you what 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 it looks. I show you what it looks like. Okay. Um, still wines basically have the carbon dioxide degassed off and you can put it either in a carboy, leave it in the carboy, or you can put it into a regular wine bottle. Um, you also have the option of trapping that carbon dioxide in your wine. And that's how a sparkling wine is made. Boom. Just like just like sodas are made. Notice how she didn't say champagne, right? Cause you can, you can only make champagne in champagne. Right? Is that what you are? There you go. See? Yeah. And you can only make cognac and cognac. That's right. See? Boom. So, sparkling wine. Uh, it's a sparkling wine. <laughs> and that's really all a sparkling wine is. It's that the fermentation um, was done in, su in such a way where if where we're using the bucket, we're letting the CO2 escape or the carbon dioxide escape. Uh, sparkling wines trap that carbon dioxide within the bottle and that makes your bubbles. Okay. In order to do that, you need special bottles. Special bottles. bottles. That can, yeah, that can stand up to that pressure. Right. Um, that's going to be sophomore wine making. That's going to be <laughs> the next series, maybe. Next series, we'll you talk about. You guys want to do champagne? Wine. Maybe. I mean, not some champagne. Sparkling wine. If you sparkling want to do wine. Sparkling wine. <laughs> and then maybe we'll roll that up with using your own fruit from your garden yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yes. We'll elevate but, on the next level. Yeah. Yeah. But for this particular project, we are going to make a still wine okay. um, that you could use different bottles for no matter what you like. Okay. Um, I'm personally a fan of swing top type bottles. Right. Um, and this was what I wanted to show you. If I go back into here. Sorry. Um, no. Good, I'm laughing at CG. <laughs> you what do you say? What do you say? CG, she said, uh, woo, y'all, that yak though? <laughs> Talking about the cognac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Cognac. cognac. Sorry if I'm making anybody dizzy. I apologize. Uh, no, Almost I there. And then after this, we'll roll into the last little ingredients that they need. Yes. Yes. For yes, the yes. wine. Ah, here we go. Swing tops. Oh, they're probably out of them. Um, let me see if I can quickly show you what a swing top looks like. No, I don't want to do that. Everything, y'all. The one I had on the list are sold out, so I got to find another one. Swing top bottles. And once you see them, you'll know exactly what they are. These right here. Can you see these? Boom. Oh. In about 20 seconds. Okay. Um, do not buy these on Amazon. <laughs> do not. <laughs> because you can get them way, way, way cheaper elsewhere. Um, the Dottle Tree, I know, sells them. Um, like places that. like TJ Maxx and um, at home places like that will sell them relatively inexpensive big lots if you have those in your area they sell them really cheap um, uh, you can go to a grocery store that sells those specialty lemonades those sparkling lemonades um, those usually come in bottles like that so you can recycle the reason why I like these type of bottles is just in case <laughs> there's still a little bit of gas going on in there, the bottles will not explode on you. These are made for pressure. Nice. Okay, because they're made for sodas and beers and things like that. Matter of fact, some of yeah. you may even recognize these as beer bottles type of beer exactly. bottles. Exactly. Okay. I know a few. <laughs> so these are made to hold pressure. Um, 
Champagne bottles are also made to hold pressure. Um, but again, yeah, that's, that's sophomore. As well. That's sophomore. Um, if you already have a collection of wine bottles, no judgment here. <laughs> they can be reused. <laughs> or you can do like I do and just keep it in the car, boy. <laughs> Boom. There you okay. go. Okay. Um, what goes along with making a still wine? Go ahead. I'm sorry. You got to. I'm sorry. Uh, I oh, thought you had go. a question. Um, what goes along with making a uh, uh, still, still, wine. still wine? I don't know why yeah. that word was escaping me at the moment. <laughs> but, <laughs> there's a couple of ways to, to do that. I had it right the first time. You can do it like grandpappy used to do, or you can do it 21st century. <laughs> I like 21st if you, century. Yeah. If you recall, one of the things I told you if, when you when you select your juice, it should not have potassium sorbate in it. What potassium sorbate is, um, is a yeast inhibitor. It tells your yeast, go to sleep. Stop replicating. Stop making alcohol. You can still be alive. Just don't do nothing. <laughs> That's what sorbate, um, potassium sorbate is. It's a preservative. Okay. Um, the way grandpappy used to do it, he did it one of two ways. He either did what was called cold crashing. He threw it in a very, very cold freezer and let the yeast die off from cold, or he pasteurized it by boiling the wine in the bottle and killing off the yeast with heat. Okay. Anybody that's doing any water canning out there, that's what you're doing. You're pasteurizing your food. Okay. You could do the same thing with your wine if you wanted to do it that way. I'm going to heavily suggest, and the way I'm going to be teaching this is the use of potassium sorbate. And the reason why is because I don't want anybody's bottles to explode accidentally. If you just happen to miss a step or didn't measure your wine the right way and you bottle it up and that sucker explodes, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> Ain't my problem. <laughs> so I'm going to heavily suggest that this go around, we are going to use the potassium sorbate to, to, to quiet our wine down. Okay. And I got some right here. Boom. You so, ain't playing, Robert. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, because I'm about to, we about to be brewing up all types of stuff. I'm not joking. <laughs> Listen. Nice. We drink nice, wine in this nice. house. Yeah. So uh, on the list, yeah. I put the small two ounce jars for anybody that just wants to try it out first. Um, yeah, you so, just want to try it out. Or yeah. you can go all the way in. Like or you can just go all the way in. Yeah. Get yeah, one pound. Yep. <laughs> so um, those are the, the base things that you need. There's tons of other stuff that goes into winemaking. Once you start getting Let's into that. Let's talk about that. The, uh, the types of yeast, though. Let's oh. Let's back to the types of yeast. Okay. Based off the juice that you're going to, pick. okay, and then once we do that, I think we have covered all of the things that we need okay. to get this all rocking. Right. Yes, Boom, on one go. of my videos, I'm going to go into depth about wine yeast. <clears throat> um, you can make wine with just about any yeast. yeast out there. You can take fruit from outside, okay? Throw it in a jug, give it a little sugar, and it will make wine because there are wild yeasts out there, okay? The wines that we are using to produce ours are what are, are what is called domesticated yeast. They've been gathered and they've been tested to do different things. You can make yeast, excuse me, you can use yeast that <laughs> are made specifically for champagne, or you can go as cheap as bread yeast to make wine. Um, part of what goes into yeast are also what's called uh, flavor profiles. So while bread yeast is frowned upon, let, let's put it this way, bread yeast is gonna be your butter knife. <laughs> The yeast that I'm showing on the screen are going to be your power, your power tool. OK, 
Okay. And so y'all see, I got the power tool. I do power tool. <laughs> you know, I like the I like to see what it is. So I ordered, I literally ordered one of these buckets out of pure curiosity. And that was it. And yep. um now I've seen it, I'm like, okay, I can yeah, do we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I can now, do it. Yeah. Now for a homemaking wine, there's two primary um uh manufacturers of of yeast. There's plenty more, plenty more, but there's two that are gonna come out. Lavalin and Red Star. Anybody that bakes pretty much already knows what Red Star is. They, they have a full array of different type of yeast, uh, including wine. Uh, Lavalin um, is more of once you really get into uh, the, the hobby. Um, now, this one I'm showing you, if you want to try this one, it's D47. That's like your baseline yeast for them. It's pretty much a table wine yeast. You're going to yield about 12% out of it. Um, the red stars that I'm showing you are specific to your fruit type. Uh, the uh, Cote de Blanc is for your white or light type of fruit wines. Um, and then your Premier Rouge is for your red or deep, deep, uh, deep colored fruit type wines. Both of them behave a little bit differently, um, depending on what your uh, juice choice is. Um, I would, pref you know, I suggest these two. Um, your uh, Cote Blanc is going to yield you about twelve percent, I think of it. No, fourteen. It goes up to 14% if it's dried out. And your uh, Premier Blanc, uh, excuse me, Premier Rouge is gonna get you about 15%. That's why out. I got the Premier Rouge. <laughs> we going, we, we putting in that work. We want yeah. the real one. <laughs> <laughs> no. I want the one that thinks, now, you should think twice before you pour another glass. Yes. Now, um, and, and again, I will get into more specifics as we go along. I will tell you, Robert, even though you got the 15%. Yeah, I know, I know. We gonna make it 12, okay? <laughs> and uh, the only reason why, the only reason why is because there's another thing I wanna teach you how to do. Okay. Right, so we're gonna kind of underproof the, the yeast on this. Okay, that's fair. Okay. I'll have my side batch where I There where you I go. go. Once we once we get into <laughs> once we get into sophomore range, we'll learn how to, you know, play with the yeast and play with the sugars and See, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, guys. So don't be mad, guys. She <laughs> reeling me back in myself. So pooped on my parade, but right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. But yeah, we're going to you gotta to crawl aim. before you run. So exactly. We're, we're gonna try to aim for about a twelve percent on, on Okay. Both okay. Okay. Um, so did I, did I miss anything else? That's no, I, we, we went over everything. Um, I think when you do the cleaning sanitizing video, we'll go in a little more depth of the do's and don'ts and the things to re look out for and how to properly read your hydrometer. Yeah. Um, we might even have a surprise video underway from a very good mentor of ours showing you how to DIY a couple things from this video that we discussed. But all in all, I think we hit everything. Let's open it up to uh, Led and maybe Led caught on to something maybe we missed if he's still in the building. Um, yeah, yeah you, Led, did, did I miss anything? Team, <laughs> you see CCG, she's starting to get. And Aries would demand that 15. Where's my <laughs> wife? She's downstairs watching this probably in, in the, um, I ask her, babe, you want to come up and say hi to the people real quick? She probably won't, but she might. She might. She might. My, this my might be her first said hi. She better come up That's and say right. hi. That's right. Her husband, her husband came by. What's his name? Marcus? It was his name Marcus, Marcus yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Marcus came by and waved at the camera. Put her on the spot. <laughs> Poke your head in the door and wave hi to the people real quick, babe. <laughs> Hurry up and get to that level, Robert, so we can get our 15. See, look, she came in right behind you, CG. <laughs> Right in behind you. We need to get our game up to 15%. Yep, that's that's your other half. That's why you married her, right? Yeah, that's why I married her. That's true, that's facts, that's facts. Yeah, so, so are we at a good place where we can open it back up to questions to our watchers at the moment? I was asking you, Ms. Crap. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we're definitely in a good place. If there's any questions on what I, um, I, uh, 
said we were going to go over um, anything specific for anybody that's already making wine or trying the hand at wine. I'm, I'm an, you know, I, I can help out as much as I can. Yep. Yep. And like I said, at the end of the, when this video is done and it's finished uploading probably tomorrow, uh, I will go in the description. I will put a link to the car for Amazon. We're not making any money off of it. I promise you. So if you think that we're trying to force you to Amazon <laughs> because we're going to make money, we're not. It's just a no. link with a list and it'll show you everything that you need to purchase based off the list we did. And I'll probably type out the must gets and then the possible alternatives. But I encourage you to just get the right tools the first time. And while you have the right tools, figure out, engineer something that you don't have to have those tools and start using them in lieu of the right tools. That way, when these tools break or they pass their life cycle, you have experience with the proper tools and you're able to now use your DIY improvised tools. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 Led, um, did I miss anything, Sensei? Yeah, yeah, Led, did, we, did she miss anything? Cause you know, I don't know. I'm learning, look, I literally have not watched any other wine making videos. I'm not going to, you can tell me about all the cool ways that you've seen somebody else do it. I don't care, I wanna learn from this stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna follow Ms. Craft step-by-step and learn her way. And then after that, just like with anything else that I do, I'm going to try and do things. Exactly. Her fair so. Learn the basics, then go out on your own. Okay. He said, learn you got it all suited. Before you, tweak, yeah, before you tweak the how. So he, oh, that's a good point there. Yes. There's an answer to your question, but I'm um, Giggy two, five, six, is there a kit that I can just buy to make this just, yeah. I don't have to, I don't want to buy a whole bunch of separate things, this and that. Just, just throw a kit at me. Does a kit exist? If you were to go to Amazon, they have kits all day long. Um, all bundled up for have, you, yeah. I should have put one. Now, on. now with these kits, when I was looking at them, because I, I started to do the same thing um, with these kits, there it, it's limits you, and then you it's almost like some of the stuff in there is a one time use, if 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 I, if I remember correctly or not. So you yeah. gotta get what you pay for sometimes, guys. Yeah. My question is how many folks are serious and want to do this project with the crew? Yeah, let's see some hands in there. Who's gonna make some wine with us? Let's this see some it. hands. And if you're re-watching it, make sure you put in the comments, we making wine. Because yeah. I wanna know how many, how many people are gonna follow along with us during this journey. You're gonna learn with me? Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, for uh, for GG25, uh, here's some on the screen, a couple examples. Um, this one for 75 right here is pretty decent. Um, it'll give you your, um, give you a single fermentator, um, a uh, racking cane or, or siphoner. Uh, it'll give you some juice. Um, and it gives you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make wine. Um, at a very, very, it's more like a dump and go type of kit here. Um, you are going to be missing a few things if you want to continue on your own and really get into the art of making wine. Um, but it's, it's, it's a pretty decent starter for about a gallon. <clears throat> the one that, that's, that I'm showing below here, this is another one. Um, Homebrew Ohio is usually a really, really good um, brand for making wine that gives you pretty much everything you need, including all of your chemicals. If you're gonna go down that way here, um, North Mountain is another really good wine. Um, as you notice, the smaller one gallon is about $52. Now you're getting into three gallons. You're gonna jump up some more. Um, I like that hit though. Yeah. Real quick, C7, yeah. thank you so much. Guava to you for the donation. Just so you know, if you- Oh, do, that's nice. <laughs> the donation. All donations from today's live will be going to Miss Craft. She didn't know that until just now. So, oh, no, you didn't. Stop. No. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Thank you. <laughs> You're my guest. You should have charged me, and you didn't. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, Mama Palmer. The friends of I'm a therapist. <laughs> and Palmer, if you're wondering, yes, that is my mother. My oh, hi, and Palmer. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Mama Bear's in the house. Um, yeah, this was actually a really pretty cool kit if you want to, you know, make this serious investment in it. It's going to give you your first um, primary um, fermenter, your secondary primer, 
um, any of the chemicals you need. It gives you some yeast and toppers. It's got the, it's got the this is a really too. nice one. It's even Darn got a cap in there. Wow, yeah. I like this one. I may buy this one, but still. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a pretty dope kit, guys. That's a really dope kit for about 160 there. Matter of fact, yeah. that looks really, really good. So and yeah, don't think about it. So it's an investment, guys. Just like with anything in the garden you buy for your garden. I mean, you don't expect to just use it one time. So maybe you get a cheap kit to see if you are going to like it and see if you're going to keep up with it. And if you decide that you like it, then you bounce back and you get your big boy kit. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. But you exactly. can reuse this stuff. They can also order whole kits from Betmar Liquid Hobbies. That's where I get yeah. all of my supplies. Yep. Boom. So there you go. There There's are, another. Yeah. If you Google um, uh, homemade brew supply, you will get a ton of online um, supply stores on there. The one that uh, Led mentioned, I, I really love. I love their store online. Yeah, but there are others out there if you're just trying to do some comparison pricing and stuff like that. But yeah, you can easily order your stuff online through a specialized specialized store. Amazon, of course, eBay, if you want to take a chance with that. I don't highly recommend it, but if you can. Um, or if you're one of those brave individuals that are willing to put on a mask, put on a mask. Yeah, put on a mask. <laughs> Go out there. And I'm sure there are winemaking stores in your area. And they usually have a little old man who's been making wine forever and a day is going to tell you exactly what you need. They may even have a kit in their store that you can use as well. Boom. There you go. Yes, I will make some wine with you guys. I'm stubborn. I want to get that white grape cherry to register properly. Well, we're gonna make it happen for you, C7. All right. We're gonna you do definitely our best. wanna you, you, do our best. you gotta go over to Miss Craft's channel um to check out her sterilizing and prep videos where she's gonna get us on board. I'm also gonna share it on my channel, a community post, so you'll know when it comes out. But if you don't forget to hit the notification bell, you won't miss it when it drops. Yep. Now you kind of touched on something earlier today and it okay. kind of sort of just came up a little bit just then. For those of you who are going to join us, um, when we get to the end of this process, I want us to be able to share what we've done. Okay. Yes. I want us to be able to send each other little samples. Okay. And we are going to, we are planning to do a live Zoom wine testing. Okay? Boom. For that, we, because we don't want it to be crowded and we want to keep it kind of simple, we are going to select two people to join us on that call. And we are going to have a, hopefully, we haven't hopefully. really asked yet, but we're hoping we're going to have a, a surprise uh, taste tester uh, to evaluate our process and our and our results. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we will ask this person later, but fingers crossed, we hopefully have that, but if, whether he does or he doesn't, damn, I let out the bag was he. So <laughs> <laughs> whether he does or he doesn't, we're still going to have the Zoom with two other people that we are going to taste each other's wine live right. on a Zoom chat. So we'll get into more details on how we're going to choose the other two, but that's just something to think about while you uh, decide whether you want to join us or not. Yeah, and uh, Guava to the wonderful Lizette, she just blessed us. Hey, Super Taya, she blessed us too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, there you go, baby. Thank you. Guava to you, baby. Guava, 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 thank you. I still got to go outside and cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are there things? <laughs> no, <my God>. Okay. <laughs> I'm in if I can get the tools. Oh, do we have a timetable for when we're looking to actually? Um, so start? I'm thinking we're gonna do the second part this Sunday. What I will do though, is I will confirm, we'll confirm Wednesday. Wednesday, I will go live and I will confirm the next date. Matter of fact, um, yeah, Wednesday I'll go live and confirm the next day. I'm waiting on my few, I'm waiting on a handful of supplies to come in. So as long as my supplies come in, we'll do it again Sunday. But either way, I will give you the heads up. So just go ahead and put on your calendar Sunday for now, same time. Mm -hmm. And if it changes, I will go live and I will let you guys know. And I will also make a community post. I would love to be able to schedule this, but because I do it through Zoom, 
it just jumps me straight into a uh, YouTube. I can't like schedule it and then pick my scheduled um, live session. So that's why it kind of has to be the way it is. What do you know about using Benzonite to help clear the wine? Oh, she's ah. jumping ahead. She's jumping ahead. <laughs> or he's jumping ahead. It's he. Remember. Yeah. Got seven Kristen, siblings. Wine making 101. <laughs> 101. 101. But we okay. can talk about it. And, yeah, to answer C7's question, um, that is one of the reasons why I chose to use a uh, juice and heavily suggest that we use a wine yeast. Um, benzonite clay is just that, it's clay. And when you're making wine, your yeast is floating around in there, particles from your fruit is floating around in there. And no matter how long you let it sit, it still floats around in there and your wine never gets clear. What the clay would do is if you introduce a little bit of that clay to your wine, it will absorb those things, it, it, the, the, the yeast and the particles, the pectin and all of that that's still kind of in there will attach to the clay and it will settle it down, okay? Um, that settlement or sediment that's at the bottom that and you'll see as we, as we go through this, it's called leaves. Basically, it's just dead yeast and particles all the way down that you don't want in your wine. Right. Um, now there are there again when it comes to the art of making wine some people say you want your wine to sit on the lease and it gives you a nice profile some people say no take it off the lease as soon as possible again when it comes to art of any type it's the artist that decides what's good or not that's right okay? i like that yes i like that so and then you know give it to the people if the people love it great if the people don't I love it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's really what it boils down We're going to drink this wine. We're going to drink this wine. <laughs> okay. So, oh, yeah, like she said, that's why we, um, because when we were trying to put this together, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so uh, some people don't care if the wine is, is a little cloudy, they just know it tastes good. There are other people who are looking to get as close to the real produced wine as possible. So they want it to be crystal clear. You can read a newspaper through. So they're willing to do all of this stuff. Again, it, it, it's in, it's, it's kind of in, to me, it's in the same vein of gardening. You could do all of that stuff if you want to. Yeah, you're going to get some kind of yield, but why? <laughs> the, the, the tomato is still going to taste just as good if you don't do all that extra stuff. <laughs> And if you do, oh. it really is possibly better. Possibly better. It's all preference. To right. me. But yes, there are things that you can do to help speed up and make your wine crystal clear. Right, right. But like she said, so we put a lot of thought into this. We went back and forth. We said, well, are we going to do the juices? Are we going to do um, fruit? Because people might have fruit coming in from their fall harvest, you know, their last big harvest. And the best way to make this user-friendly for everyone to get a nice, steady foundation, because you know me, I like to get fancy. Y'all see my garden? I'm a one-year gardener. I don't even have a full year under my belt. And people are looking at me like they think I know what I'm doing. I promise you, I'm just figuring Speak out as with I felt. authority, Robert. Speak with authority. <laughs> authority, right? <laughs> with authority. Um, to my point, like, I'm not afraid of failure. Led, he gave me the heads up like night, last night. He's like, hey, that low quad you did, it might not work. Because that's one I've struggled with. I don't care. He ain't put no fear in my heart. I want to go back and put three more on as far as I'm concerned. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to see, at the very least, you saw the process. And what you didn't see is I, I slapped one on the fig. So we, we're we going to win. We're going to have a win somehow. So, But keep it real then. Keep it dialed in for this. Let's just stick with the basics. It's hard for me, too. I don't like sticking to the basics. I like trying to do it to the limit every time push it to the limit it is in my nature right. I'm an army dude and you know it's like you show me one time i'm an expert now so i gotta go and try to do an expert that's me that's within my nature it comes with being a virgo we're just the best at whatever we try no, oh we got signs now okay <laughs> now i'm very much a capricorn so okay. i follow the rules <laughs> and i am very 
patient. I can wait out just about anybody. <laughs> Boom, there we go. See, Led Farmer, he said, I use it sometimes, but I truly prefer to let it sit until it clears. So it's all with the artist. Right, exactly. The now, and again, we, we touched on this earlier. The art of winemaking is a practice of patience. If right. you rush the process by using chemicals and things like that, you will not fully appreciate the, the uh, underlying juices or fruits that you're using to ferment. Yeah. That, only, so that only comes with age. Now, the fact that we're using a juice, like I said, eh, it's a juice, so there's only but so much of a profile you're going to get, but, <laughs> um, which is why we're making a young wine. This is a wine to drink now. <laughs> Exactly. But once again, once you actually get exactly. into the hobby and things, that you're going to want to make that one case of wine that you're going to let sit for a year and wonder what it's going to taste like. And you open it up on Christmas Day and you're like, damn, I did that. Yeah. Okay. I so did that. that. That's what, that's the ultimate goal to be able to do. Like I said, I made this last year and every time I dip into it, it gets better and better and better. Oh, so, yeah, yes. you patient because you made I that last year. Uh -uh. No, why don't last that long around these parts? Yeah. Not yeah, this now, don't get me wrong. While we're making this one, <laughs> we're going to be tasting. <laughs> you will not yeah, go thirsty. Get a little sip -sip. You're going to get a little sip sip line along the way. But yeah, I mean, but the sip sip is to say, OK, do I need it a little sweeter? Do I like it a little drier? Does it need to ferment a little bit more? You know, is it thin? Is it thick? I mean, yeah, but it's it's developing your own taste profile um, to to de declaring your wine. But once your wine is settled and it's beautiful, it's the way you wanted to taste. I, I I'm going to highly suggest take at least one of those bottles and let it sit for a couple of months and then taste the difference. There you go. Hey, and then taste the difference. Taste, taste the difference. And this is why I love. Miss Craft so much. I watched her, I think the first video I ever watched of hers is when she was describing the difference in the zones. Like you got your hardiness, your USDA hardiness, and the other one, I don't remember what it is. But when I watched her that one time, she was a nerd. And I like, I like getting nerdy with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not a yeah. basic yeah. kind of guy, which is why you see me trying all types of different things on my channel. I just like to tink with stuff. Uh, matter of yeah, fact, my uncle too. calls me Mr. Gadget. So <laughs> we vibe <Nice. laughs> really well because we both like to experiment and play with different things and hopefully experience and learn things that you don't have to go through the heartache and pain. You can watch us fail, watch us succeed, and then we make it easier for you along the way. So exactly. if you're wondering, oh, why do you pick Miss Craft? Because I could tell that we would vibe really well on this. Like I would be able to follow her very well. As you know, my first job in the military was a medical laboratory specialist. So this stuff is like right up my alley. Yeah. Um, if you were geeky, yeah, if you're geeky, nerdy, techie, likes, you know, measuring and understanding, <laughs> this is your hobby. I promise you this is your hobby. Is Make sure hobby. she guides me on this one. <laughs> Okay, I'll make sure she guides me on this one, CG. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, that's funny. Okay. So are, are there any other questions? Yeah, let's any open concerns? it up. Let's open it up for a few more questions. We don't want this to be too long because we don't or want any to other suggestions. Lead, lead, we can again open the floor to you if there's anything yeah. else we can suggest that we need to to address. Yes, floor is open. Floor is open, and then we will go ahead and cut it. Not because we're not having fun, but I want the people to have to rewatch this. I don't want them to have to like wait a long time. What please, do you please, see? Please, seven. Please read seven. <laughs> After racking a couple of times, I was running out of wine to bottle. So my last batch, I used the benzonite. It worked, but I will be more patient in the future. <laughs> Okay, hold on, C7. This is a sample. <laughs> this is not a sample. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be sampling full glasses of wine. You have to take just a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. That is excellent. <laughs> You guys are fun. This was fun. 
Oh, that was great. Any other questions? Please send them to us. Um, and then, you know, if you if you think of a question after this or if you weren't able to catch a live, just drop it in the comments below. I'm sure Miss Craft will be in the comments yes. answering questions because I'm not going to answer them. Just say, hey, Miss Craft, this, that, because I'm going to just, I'm going to direct you to her. So yes. literally these comments will be for her. Um, and um, Robert, if you would put my address in the description to my email address yep, as well. I'll put so you. If you want to just shoot me an email, you know, if you got something real specific that you want to ask, you know. You can shoot me an email. Thank well. you for your service, Veteran Nation. That's what I'm talking about, Lady Smith. Yes, I, thank you. Yes, yes. No problem. I enjoy it. I really do. I really enjoy it. I enjoy it even more now that I found lawn and gardening. Yeah. <laughs> Got a positive outlet for those stresses. You need that. I have to do. You so, need that. Yeah. Regardless of what you do, you need that positive right. outlet. You know. Everyone needs it. Yep. He <laughs> said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, folks, please throw them in. While we have the lovely, lovely Miss Craft for free 99, you better take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> I'm so silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask as a show of hands, did um, what I present make sense to everybody? Is everybody uh, um, good? Or is there something I need to clarify? So we will start making the wine next week. Yes. So we are going to mix up our wine live next week. So even if you don't have all your supplies, don't fret because the video will be up. We will try to keep that video somewhere around the 30 minute mark. That yeah, way it will not be long. it's going to be easy for you to just watch it and follow. You can pause it and be like, okay, let me do this step. And you can literally do it with me because I'm going to do it live as well. So we'll keep that one fairly short. And that's why she's going to do the prep video before we go into it. That way you can get all your tools and we can skip over a lot of stuff because you should have sanitized and prepped before we roll yes. into it. Yes. The two main things I'm going to cover will be um, how to read a hydrometer. Um, so when we actually are taking our measurements, you'll know what you're looking for and, and why. And I will also put a video out touching on the different type of yeast. Now, I, 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 in this video, I gave my suggestions um, on what yeast to use, but I'm not going to hold you to them. It's, it's really up to you. Um, again, I, I'm going to strongly suggest you. <laughs> but just in case you want to be a rebel, I'm going to give you some heads up on how to choose the yeast that you want to use. Boom. There you go. Well, because since there is a delay, we will wait an extra few minutes. Where are we at right now? Where are we at? It's at 528 at 530. We will end this stream. Yeah. And we will see you again next week live. But before then, can't forget to remind you, go over and check out Miss Craft's channel. Her link to her channel will be in the description below if you're re-watching this. If not, Miss Craft, tell the people where they can find you. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> My YouTube channel is Miss Craft Small Spaces, Small Space Gardening, and more. Oh, and the and more covers things like wine, hydroponics, <laughs> wine, um, possibly painting. You know. Yeah, I'm actually I'm I'm actually considering getting back into uh, doing some more art and actually, you know, showing how I do that, how I create some art. So. Uh, you want to, so C7 says he wants to send you a sample of the wine he's already made. So that'd uh, probably be good to send her an email, which will be in the description below. But if she wants to go ahead and let you know what it is right now. Um, my email is misscraft123 at yahoo.com. Oh, you can email her up, C7. C7 is one of seven siblings. Or did they stop at you, C7? You were the seventh? Like, um, that's a lot of kids. That gives me anxiety thinking about it. I'm gonna let you know that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, C seven. <laughs> um, the wines that I've made up to this point have been what would be classified as dessert wines. Um, so the more on the sweeter end. Um, uh, but yeah, you know what? We'll talk. We'll talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk offline. I'm, I can see myself getting nervy on you. you. Come on back. <laughs> Okay, but it would be now, awesome to see C7 if you can actually join us and, and do this with us. That would be really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, cool, guys. As a, have... yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I do plan on making a cherry wine and a uh, white grape wine. So Boom. It's right up your alley. Boom. There you go. Once she got it right, she stopped. Okay. All right, cool. All right, guys. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. Oh, she just dropped it. Thank you, CG's Natural Homestead. Can I make you a moderator? You've been so helpful. Would you mind if I made you a moderator, CG? While I'm waiting on CG's response, um, that's pretty much it, guys. We will be back next week. Don't forget, go subscribe to Miss Craft's Fall Space Gardening. CG dropped the name in there already and then her, her yahoo email is already right there misscraft123 at yahoo.com we'll be back get your supplies pick out your wine don't forget to get the wine that is what free of preservatives and she told you what to look out for which is potassium sorbate make sure there's no oh, like, yeah. sorbate in there what's the other one sulfides um, sulfides no sulfides in there and you will be good to go if you have one full missed, gallon, yes. Right, one full, full gallon. I'm sorry, 128 ounces, one full gallon. That's what oh. we're starting with. But if you want to yeah. brew more, you just double up the recipe. From what and one other thing um, with that, make sure you're getting um, just regular plain sugar. <laughs> okay, um, no honey. Yes. Not for this. Not that you can't use honey, but no honey no on this recipe. We're just using plain ordinary cane sugar. That's it. Nothing fancy, and no, there is not a sugar substitute. No sugar I substitute. Already asked. Remember, remember when you're making one, the, the, the sugar is not for you. The sugar is for the yeast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. So don't worry about it if you're a sugar challenged individual, okay? Correct. It'll be all right. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be, all, be right. all right. Well, guys, thanks again for tuning in with us. I'm excited. I don't know about y'all, but I am I, too. This is going to be so much fun. This is my first live, y'all. So this is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Miss Kraft's first live, and she done made twenty five dollars. After YouTube gets her cut, gets their cut, it'll be about fifteen dollars. That's how they grow. <laughs> We're gonna make sure she gets y'all's blessings that you sent her way. I Thank appreciate you the so much, chat. Robert. That is so kind yeah. of you. I do. Yeah, that, that just sent over to Miss Kraft, and we'll be back in a week to do step two. Yep, and look out for the, the prerequisite videos. Prerequisite videos, that's right. Check guava, in my videos. friends. Guava, guava. Ting, ting. Yes, ting, ting. We love y'all, <laughs> and until next time, um, enjoy life, you know? Yes, please. Just do that, enjoy life. All right, get you some wine to funny. step on while we make our wine. Do that. Yeah, do something nice for somebody else other than yourself make the world a little better you know amen yeah, yeah. Amen. all right y'all we'll check you later enjoy the rest of your day see you on the flip side <laughs> <laughs>